So last week I posted a ridiculously fast time-lapsed video tutorial of how I'm mounting my small paintings into floated frames. A few of you said you couldn't possibly watch it and get anything out of it because it was too fast and could I please slow it down. I just sold another one of these small paintings this morning and I have to put it into a floater frame so I'm going to invite you along on the process and this will be a real time tutorial of what I do. All right, so this is the painting that needs a frame and I'm going to walk you through all the materials so that you have all of those things nearby um, as I do. So when we get going, you won't have to stop and start the video to get a hammer or a screwdriver or something. So this is a six by six cradled panel. It's a little birch panel. And I love mounting these in tray frames because you know, they really just set them off and make them look a lot more beautiful than they already are. You are going to need a tray frame or a front loading frame or a floater frame, depending on what you guys call it, wherever you live. I buy mine from Opus. They come in these nice packages with great little corner pieces on them so you can actually use those in your wrapping if you want to protect your corners. These guys cost about $25 Canadian if you buy them singly, if you're a member at Opus, I think, and if you buy them in bulk, you can get them a little bit cheaper than that. So you buy the size that you need for the piece that you want to frame. Um, this is a six by six, there we go, a six by six inch frame. Of course, it's bigger than that, but my six by six inch piece is going to fit inside, okay? So along with the frame, you're gonna need something else. I'm gonna put this off to the side because I have one that's already opened. You're going to need something called offsets. Now, Opus sells these in little packages as well, separately from the frames, and it, they'll give you information about what size you need to buy. So for these six by six inch frames and with the little six by six inch boards I'm putting in, I need a three eighth of an inch offset. It comes with eight offsets and 16 screws, and they look like this. They look kind of like little zigzags or little S's. And so the idea is, Part of it's going to go on the back of the frame, the tray frame, and part of it's going to go on the back of your painting, okay? And it comes with enough screws, and those are a Phillips head screws. So those are my offsets and my screws. I've got a screwdriver here, a little Phillips head screwdriver. If you have um, a fancy screwdriver, electric screwdriver, I forget what they're called. I don't have one. I just have to use my own muscles. And along with that, I usually use a nail and a hammer just to create the first little guide for where the screw is going to go, okay? That means, of course, I also need a pencil to mark the spot. I'm going to put the um, wires on after I'm finished, so you can stay for that if you'd like, and I have all of my tools that I need for putting the wires on, the cutters, the picture wire, um, the D-rings, and the screws for those as well nearby, okay? Whoops. So to get started, suggest you put a nice clean piece of paper down, upside down. And uh, one more thing, cut up a bunch of little pieces of cardboard. These are like little shims that you're going to be putting in to help you get your um, piece frame, your piece centered in the frame, okay? Make sure that they're a little bit taller than the piece itself, because if they're not, they're going to get lost down in there, wedged in between the, the painting and the frame once we get going. And this is just gonna help us make sure everything's nice and square and centered. And then I also have another uh, piece that's a six by six board that I can use once I'm starting to screw things in and I need this piece to sit up just a little bit higher, okay? So this is your last chance to clean your edges up, make sure that your varnish or your cold wax is how you want it. Same thing with your frame. If there's any dust or dirt in those little corners, you wanna get it out now, because once the, once the um, picture, the painting goes in there, you're not going to be able to do that as easily. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start by putting the frame down, facing me. Doesn't matter which way it goes, it's all the same on the back. You'll notice it's just got a nice, nice uh, unfinished back here. And all of the stuff that I need to put on the back, the name of the painting, my signature and date, and my card, I like to get those done first because sometimes it gets a little hard to work inside. One thing to pay attention to is make sure that you leave some space where there's no writing around your corners and you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm gonna pop that into the tray frame. And there, doesn't that look lovely? You'll notice it's not quite flush. 
if I go up to the side, you might see that. You might not quite be able to see that. Um, that's what the offsets are gonna do. They're gonna help us lift this painting just a bit so it sits flush with the front of the tray frame. So around the edges, I've got probably a millimeter of space between the painting and the frame itself. And I wanna try to keep that space even all the way around. When I flip it over to start putting the screws on, what's gonna happen is the painting's going to move and shift a little bit. So that's what we're gonna use these little wet pieces of, of cardboard for. And Louise Fletcher, thank you for the idea for doing this. So what I like to do is stick one in on each side. Because these pieces were all cut from the same piece of cardboard, they're all the same thickness. Go thick or go thin versus thick on these because you wanna be able to um, wedge them in and, and if your cardboard's too thick you won't have enough space. So I want one round and I'm going to start putting a second round in. I'm noticing already it's getting a little tight to get those pieces in there. Not so tight on that side. You can move the painting a little bit. You have a little bit of leeway with movement at this point. That one doesn't want to go in. And one more on that side. And wow, it's only taking two on each side. Those guys are in fairly tight, and that's gonna give me a fairly even distribution of space around the edge of the painting, okay? So here's where the fun part comes. Make sure those are wedged in, and you want them to be in tight enough that when you flip the painting over, they don't fall out. If they fall out, you probably needed to put another piece of cardboard all the way around. Alrighty, so we're gonna flip it over, and because these things aren't quite level, that this isn't quite flush with the piece underneath. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just going to set it on top of the piece below. Is that gonna work? There's my pieces, there we go. So you'll see things are pretty flush now because I'm on a flat surface on flat surface. So what I wanna do is I wanna start by putting my corner pieces onto the back of the painting, okay? Notice there's a bit of a lip there, if you can see there's a bit of space between where the top piece sits and where I want it to go into the back of the frame. That's okay, we're gonna solve that problem in a few minutes. But for now, I want everything to be sitting so my painting is flat on a surface and this is nice and tight, the frame is nice and tight to it, okay? So I'm gonna take my little piece, there's a shiny side and a not so shiny side, doesn't really matter. You can decide how you wanna do it. I am going to put them around the corners like this, two down here, and two up here. This is why I suggested making sure that your writing doesn't go into the corners because you might be covering up your signature. Where's the shiny side on that one? There it is. Doesn't really matter, okay? So from here, what I wanna do is I want to put little screws into those pieces and so that this bit is flush onto the bottom of the painting, okay? I'm gonna just draw a little dot you don't have to do that if you don't want. And if you have a proper drill uh, or a proper screwdriver and you don't have to use your muscles, um, it's a little easier to get these in straight. Come on. And after I'm done this, I'm gonna take those little dots and I'm gonna take my nail and I'm gonna make a little bit of noise, okay? Right into the center of that because that's where I want my screw to sit. very far of course and it makes all the rest of the pieces jump let's just do two for now okay. and I'll take the screw I'll come back and get those in just a minute and I'll take my screw and I'll put it into that guide and I'll start to screw it in now one of the things I've learned the hard way and this isn't the only way to do this. I know some of, some people like to use glue, hot glue with this. I don't have good track record with hot glue. I tend to get it everywhere and I worry about it causing problems and getting in between the painting and then me not being able to get it off. So what I wanna do is I wanna screw this down most of the way, but not all of the way. And you'll see why in a little minute, in a minute. Okay, if you've ever put together Ikea furniture and worried about getting things square, you'll understand why you don't want to Screw one screw all the way in place in a corner. Leave the other three floating because you'll never get it square. <laughs> you have to work it corner by corner for these. Okay, so I'm going in oh, maybe 80% of the way, not all the way down, but I do want to get 
the offset, the part of this offset that's on the painting, I do want it to be flat down there eventually, okay? So let's go these other two corners that I had. Let's find that nail. This is why you want everything nearby. Let's make a little puncture hole right on top of the... Good, there's one. There's the other. Now I'm going into the corner with my offsets, depending on how big your piece is and how big your tray frame is. Sometimes you can go into the sides and do them, those, those uh, 12, six, nine, and three. You'll notice because of the small size of this that my hole is going to be too close to the edge and I'm probably gonna risk damaging the, the frame that the painting is painted on. So that's why I've gone to corners, but I think if you go up to the 12 by 12 frames in these, you'll have a little bit more space to work with those offsets. So just something to keep in mind. All right, let's get this one going. Come on, things have moved a little and that's okay because nothing is final yet. Nothing is final until we finish screwing everything down at the end. And this is where all the fiddling I was doing on the time lapse that went back and forth and back and forth. And some of you guys watched that and said it was making me dizzy. I apologize for that. <laughs> but of course, this video is going to be like 20 minutes long and that one was only two. So there you go. There's the trade off. I was a little nervous about doing these the first time. I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to do a very professional job things weren't going to be lined up properly, that I was going to make mistakes with where I was putting my screws. And, you know, it's like anything. It can look intimidating and difficult until you actually sit down and start to do it and figure, and figure out what the problem that you need to solve is. And uh, then it's not so difficult. Okay, so those four are in approximately where I want them. We'll be able to do a little bit of shifting around if we have to. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten each one by a full revolution, one, and then go to the next corner. This is where the experience putting together IKEA furniture comes in handy. You know you want to tamp down on these corner by corner, getting a little tighter with each one and keeping it nice and square. So don't let this piece move off to the side if you can avoid it, because we're gonna to have to go into that one next. Okay, that's nice and tight, let's tighten up. Good. And I tend to leave these just a tiny bit um, loose at the very end so that I can back off and retighten if need be, okay? So they're mainly done, but they could use a little bit more once we get the rest of the stuff done. All right, so let's flip it over. Let's have a little look. My corners all look exactly where I want them to be. I can take these out now because, oh, and they will get stuck. So be careful as you're pulling them out that you don't leave something in there. <laughs> leave a little present for your collector. And you'll notice it's loose right now. It's attached, but it's loose. And that's the difference between the offset, that little drop that we have. So now I take the bottom piece away and I place it onto, right down onto my surface. And now what should happen is everything should be more or less even. That is flush with where I want it to be at the front, okay? So both the tray frame and the painting are now sitting flush on the same surface as opposed to here where just the frame, just the, sorry, the painting was elevated. So now I need to go through and I need to do exactly the same thing on the bottom of the tray frame. So I'll put my four little dots in. Good. And I'll find my nail. This time things won't bounce everywhere. That's it. Again, if you have an electric drill, you won't have to do this. This part with the nail because your electric your electric screwdriver or whatever you call it I don't even know what the name of that tool is just don't have one we'll do it for you alrighty so again let's start with one corner come on 
Make sure you're going straight down into these. If you have to stand up to get better angle on it, I would encourage you to do that. You don't want to send your screw in sideways. And I'm gonna go kitty corner on these ones to help keep the frame um, and the painting nice and square as I go in, okay? Don't put them all the way in. Just put them part way in. Just get them going. That looks good. We'll go over here now. Get a little bit of movement. That's okay. We'll check it out before we tighten everything up. We'll flip it over a couple times and make some minor adjustments if we need to. And let's go one more over here. Oops, come on. I love a short handled screwdriver. Um, you're nice and close in terms of applying pressure and even torque. So, plus it fits in your pocket. We have a number of these around the house. I keep stealing them from my husband. Good, I'm gonna push that one down a little farther and that one down a little farther and that one down a little farther. You'll notice some of them go in more easily than others. Okay, then I wanna flip it over and I wanna see if I've kept my even alignment, which I should have, okay? And this one looks pretty good. The last time lapse that I showed you, I had some challenges with that alignment and so I had to keep going back and forth, front to back and loosening certain screws and retightening other screws to pull it square. But I think that this method that I've used and shown you today, of first attaching to the painting before you come back and attach to the frame is a good way to go to prevent that problem, okay? So let's tighten up one or two revolutions on each corner. We want these to be as flush to the frame as we can get them. Try not to strip, strip the screw though. Have, I, have you ever done that before? I've stripped screws before and then it's impossible to do anything with them. Come on, right down. Good, so if you need to figure out what size of offset to buy, if you, if you have a choice, you basically need to know what the distance is between the painting, where the painting sits here, and where the top of the frame is. And that's that 3 8 of an inch, so that's why I'm using a 3 8 of an inch offset here. Good, so that's done. It's level, it's even, it's flush. Painting's not going anywhere. Of the three that I've done, that's the best job yet. Third time's a charm. All right, so if you don't care about putting wire on the back of a painting, you don't need to know how to do that, you can just flip off now. Um, otherwise, I shouldn't have said flip off. That means different things in different places, doesn't it? I mean, you could just click away now. You don't have to stay with me. I'm going to quickly go and add the uh, D-rings, okay? And I have found with these paintings in particular, these little ones, I don't want to go too low with my D-rings because if I do, the, the, the um, tray frame itself is quite heavy and it pulls it, it pulls the painting away from the, from the wall. So on these ones, I went down about two inches. Normally I would go around three. Um, two to two and a half, I'm gonna say, because I have to leave room for the wire, okay? So a little, little dot there, and another two and a half down here, one, two and a half. And I know from previous experience with these that I have to be uh, just around a centimeter in from the edge for them to work well, because this is what my D-ring's gonna look like, okay? It's gonna sit here like this, and then I'm gonna wire. I'm gonna grab that nail, I love my nail. Makes a nice little guide for working the screw into. Otherwise, it's very hard to get started on the screws with these, I find. Alrighty, and D-ring and screw. So if you have a choice of your D-ring, there's gonna be a wrong side and a right side. Try to put the, the, um, the nice smooth side to the top. And again, going in evenly straight down and you want to put these in fairly tight you don't want them to move once the wires on them that's going to change your position your top position for your wire good 
you know, and if you goof up on any of these, you can always just take them back a step. You can, you can unscrew any of these pieces. Um, you can make another hole in the back of the frame. I've certainly done that before because I've decided I didn't like where I put a certain screw or a fastener in. Um, these frames are quite tough. Good, good, good. It's a lot of hardware, isn't it? Some of the places that I have looked for tray frames or front loading frames, floater frames, actually do come with the hardware. So that's something you might want to think about whether or not uh, it's worth you paying extra to get that. Alrighty, so here's my pin. There's the end. I don't need to go very uh, with very much extra on this one because it's the, it's going to hang down below this point. I need to make sure that it doesn't go up too high. So I'm going to cut myself about here. Give myself an extra, I don't know, couple of inches on either side. Come on. I've just started buying this plastic coated picture framing wire instead of the uncoated stuff. And I must say I like it a lot better for the back of the paintings little harder to cut through though okay so let's just you'll notice that's a little off I'm just going to take it back I'm going to line this up a little bit better because the tension is going to be directly across bring that in give it a tiny little crimp just to see if I'm in the right spot this one in another crimp um, and for these ones I don't want I don't want this any higher than here because if somebody puts a hook and hangs the hangs their the wire on their hook we want the top of the painting to sit flush to the wall if that makes any sense so you find that spot that's one side nice and tight and then the way i do this and i know there's as many ways to do this as there are artists i just give it a nice tight spiral around 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 this entire painting is only about two pounds so I believe I have 30 pound wire here, a little overkill, um, but better to be safe than sorry, right? So that's gonna sit there and then I'll just double check where it's gonna, where it's gonna sit with the, when it's on a, on a nail or a hook. I might add a tiny bit to it. You don't have to have much room there in the center for it to lift up, for it to be an effective hanging mechanism. I have learned. I think the first paintings I ever sold, <laughs> I put the wire too close to the top. And when my collector went to hang them on her wall, the wire was up here, up above the top of the painting, uh, which wasn't exactly the look we were going for, right? You kind of want it hidden. And that's going to move around a little. Let's just crimp that down. If you've got an extra pair of pliers, you can use that to, and I don't have one handy just to make sure that that's nice and tight. Okay, and then there you go. It's on, oh, I, I poked my finger. I'll keep that away from the white. And there you go, all done. Packaging it up next, sending it off to its new home. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks guys.